What is the announcement? What does it mean to this area? Well, obviously, as a, a, a big announcement, it's uh, something we've been working at for for a number of years now. You know, I think, quite honestly, when we came here to the site, we were hoping we should get the site back to its full capacity. Uh, and having done that, the next thing was to give us the opportunity to extend the life in a material way. This contract does exactly that. Uh, the, this contract puts us in a position to operate as a uh, uh, eight unit site till 2064. You know, it's a long time and it's a, it's a massive contribution. It means that this site will provide more than a third of the province's power uh, for decades to come. Tell us about uh, refurbishment is still on schedule for the uh, units not done yet? Yeah, it's a, it's a complex schedule, but basically what this uh, allows for is commencing the first refurbishment in 2020. Um, but between the, then and now, we'll invest significantly to extend the operational life of the units uh, to phase these refurbishments, uh, and we will then work our way through all of the units. So there's a, a pretty heavy investment program that runs from now till 2035. So it's a it's an ongoing. You know, we're trying to levelise that out, but it's a very significant investment, more or less, without uh, without any interruptions. What does this mean for the surrounding community that really relies on, on Bruce Power for, for employment and such? Well, I think it's obvious in terms of our permanent staff because now we're looking at you know 4,250 people with jobs lasting out uh, for decades to come, and obviously there'll be an ongoing replacement and re uh, refreshing of that workforce. But but you know people remember what it was like when we we're doing the refurbishments and the kind of peaking resource that came uh, because of the way our program works now. That peaking resource is likely to be here. Uh, without interruption, so you know there'll be a there'll be a uh, you know an addition to a community that will be stable and in pretty long term. Sharing the cost, I mean, uh, actually not sharing the cost, taking on the brunt of any overruns. I mean, obviously the last refurbishment, we talked a lot about lessons learned. I mean, obviously you don't want overruns, but you're going to take it all on this time. Yeah, that was a key part of the requirement of the deal. The, the long-term energy plan, uh, one of the factors in that was uh, an expectation of real transfer of risk. Uh, and so, you know, we have to be comfortable taking that risk. You know, the, the reality is it's our plan. We've had the chance to, to do these repurposes before. Uh, there were indeed some lessons learned, some pretty expensive lessons. Uh, and one of the things we had to do is convince ourselves and then our investors that uh, that was a risk that was it was uh, they they were able to take, uh, and the way we do that is of course by by demonstrating that we be, that we have indeed enshrined the lessons. But the other thing I'd say is now we're in a position where nothing that we need to do in the future has not been done before. You know, the, the last time we were taking on a lot of first of a kind stuff, and, and uh, we achieved it, but perhaps uh, with a degree of uh, misplaced optimism in terms of how how long it would take us. This time. We've done it all before, we've seen it before, uh, and we already you know, have confidence on how long things will take and how much they'll cost, and for that reason, uh, we're prepared to take that risk. Some of the slides, as you spoke to the employee group, uh, predicted an annualized investment, and I think that would be a, a good point to share. Yeah, you know, the headlines of the announcement are that we'll spend 13 billion on refurbishments. Uh, but in addition to that, we will be spending ongoing capital at quite a significant rate over the full term. As I said, it's really a, uh, if you look at the heavy investment period, it's really a, an 18 year program of investment that starts you know, in 2016 and it runs uh, more or less throughout. So when you consider our total capital investment over that period, uh, you know, in addition to what we spend normally, it is a, a very heavy spend program. Uh, Duncan, uh, I guess with the lessons learned, uh, how does it affect the rollout of this uh, refurbishment as it appears a lot different? Than yeah, the the, the obviously the, the, the difference this time is these units are all running, they're all running well, so it's a very different uh, scope of work. You know, the, the reality is that one and two have been out of service for 17 years, there was a lot of uh, uh, catch up regulatory requirements, there's a lot of equipment maintenance that hadn't been done for you know, a long time, and as a consequence of that, there's a much bigger scope. This time, we're talking about taking down very well-performing units and replacing major components. In fact, the term that we use is major component replacement as opposed to refurbishment, and there's a, there's a reason for that, because the, we're taking them down just to replace major components. Uh, and so the scope is a lot less, and for that reason, we can phase the work better. Uh, uh, we can manage the life of the units better. You know, the, the thing that's 
uh, that's been a, uh, a stalwart of the way we've operated these sites is, is maximising the life of the units. So this model has us and maximise the life of the units and then pick the right time to do the major component replacements for that unit but also as a, uh, as a site wide activity. So what, what can the community expect then? Like the first power boom was just such a big thing uh, you know, 10 years ago. So how will this affect the community? Yeah, well, you know, uh, as I said, there's going to be uh, an ongoing levelised period of work. The, the issue we've had in the past uh, with one and two was, of course, we had this very high level of uh, contract worker activity and then they disappeared. And, uh, and for the last three years, I guess, it's been uh, pretty base load. It's not insignificant in itself, but uh, but really what this deal will do will we'll bring back that workforce uh, and effectively have them stay, you know, as I say, I think it's 18 years with uh, you know, very little uh, modulation. Will that workforce be starting in 2016 or 20? Yeah, but no, no, it's the, 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 the program of investment starts right away because we, what we have to do is if you take, for example, uh, the next year is a busy program anyway. I was facing containment outage at Bruce, uh, Bruce A. We have a 102 day outage starting on uh, Unit 8 and then 29th of January. So we're kind of into it right away here. And the reason these outages are long is because we're doing activities during those things to extend the life. So that those are, will all be supported by contract labour. So you're going to see a lot of uh, building trade labour here. And obviously, some of their decisions will be. Uh, be taken differently because they know there's mm -hmm. continuity of work. In the past where people have rented homes or cottages or been in caravans because they think it's a short term thing, now they can see a continuum of work. That's why uh, a few months ago, and I think it might have been you John, that asked me about when we signed the memorandum of understanding with the building trades. What was that about? Well that was all about saying this is coming, get ready, plan for it, recruit for it, first nations opportunities, um, all of those things are all built into it so we can build a workforce that uh, is capable of carrying out this large uh, scale of work. A uh, new build, I mean uh, obviously I'm not trying to rain on the parade but I guess that's what I'm doing. Uh, we didn't hear about a new build today, I mean that's still something you'd like to see I would imagine. Yeah, no, at the end of the day, uh, I, if you remember when the long term energy plan was being put together and we were asked to make a submission, we, we didn't support new build. Uh, I, I don't see a, a I, I think everything we do has to be credible. It, there wasn't an argument for new build. There, there wasn't a case for it. The, the province doesn't need it. And so I'm not going to advocate something uh, that, that isn't sound. We've advocated uh, the, the replacement of these nuclear units because they're very price uh, competitive with anything else you can do. Um, a new build isn't right now. Uh, and there's no need for the province to take the risk. Uh, nor is there any need for the province to go out and look for new capacity when they've got such uh, well-running units here right now. Is there a but there though if we look 50, 60 years down the road? I mean, because that's—I yeah. mean, this is great for the, you know, decades. But if we're talking beyond that, yeah, the I would ask the next guy because I'm guessing <laughs> 2064 is even a bit too long for me, Scott. But you know, the reality is that uh, uh, w what we're doing here is, you know, we're carving out a market share for nuclear. Right now, that market share has been met by the refurbishment of nuclear units. You know, I, I think if you're serious about climate change and you understand what's there, then you know at some point you're going to have to replace this design with the next one in the series. So, I, 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 I think you know the, the old term "nothing succeeds like success." Yeah, you know, we we run these units very well. These are world-class units, and as a consequence of that, people invest in them. We refurbish them on time and on budget. Uh, and the next conversation is a lot easier about how do you feel about building new ones. But, you know, I'd like to kind of bask in the glory of this one for at least a couple of decades, if you don't mind. <laughs> <laughs> and then you can talk to me in 2035. Sure. Will we be talking to you in 2035? Like, you've guaranteed yeah. the future. What's left for you to do? Well, 2035, you might be talking to me at a seance. But, I, uh, <laughs> but uh, you know, at the end of the day, you know, I came here to do a job. We, one of the one of the uh, key things I think was to secure the site for the long term. We've done that. Um, you know, we've done that. We've all done that together. So, you know, uh, there's an end date on everybody. There's an expiry date. I don't want to speculate on what that is, John. But uh, you know, today, as I said, I want to take pleasure in having achieved you know one of our major milestones. And, and that's what we There were two corporate ownership structures now that's been consolidated into one. Yes. 
Yeah, I mean, obviously, uh, the reason for the two partnerships was because we had different ownership in Bruce A and in Bruce B. Uh, then, of course, Cameco sold out their stake in uh, Bruce A, leaving you know two people owning Bruce A and three people owning Bruce B. And then some time ago, of course, Cameco then sold out of Bruce B. Uh, and so the old partnerships were a legacy of that. But they were tied to the fact that the Bruce B units had a very short operating life if we hadn't negotiated this deal. Now we negotiate this deal, uh, it's, it's just common sense given the ownerships it's similar. Uh, and the other important thing is that the, uh, this deal means that the output from the site is all sold as a single product uh, to the same customer. And for that reason there's a single site price and obviously it's very hard to do that with two partnerships. One question, I mean obviously naysayers will point to now we have more nuclear waste, what are we going to do with it? Over the time of this, we've talked about possible recycling and doing something with the nuclear waste. Is there any hope? Do, do you see something else being done with the, the nuclear waste? Because that's people will say, now we've got more coming. Yeah, you know, it's interesting. People haven't asked that uh, because I think people are focused on the environmental benefits of, of nuclear being in the system. I, you know, I've expressed opinions on you know, what I think can be done with that. I think people understand that, that Bruce Power's role in this is to fund the storage of spent fuel. Uh, and uh, long-term decommissioning costs for the site, which we are doing. Now, we're funding those uh, on the basis of the current arrangements. Uh, if the arrangements can be improved upon, I'd like to play a role in that, but, but we don't have what's called title to that. So, you know, uh, I have opinions. You know, I'm never short of opinions, but I don't have the ability to make decisions. Uh, I think there are options that will come, come about. But for, for now, you know, the, the comfort I take is, firstly, that there is a sound technical solution. Uh, secondly, that the costs to meet all of that have been funded through this agreement. There are no other costs. There's no hidden costs. We're funding everything. We're funding buying the fuel, storing the fuel till the end of time if necessary. We're funding the decommissioning these plants. There is no hidden subsidy. There's no hidden cost. And all of that comes at $65.73 and that's a good price.